Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, April 7th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan today ran into an interesting piece of uh, malicious uh, email that delivered the Lucky Bot info stealer. In itself, not really all that remarkable. Lockybot is well known, often described, and essentially does harvest your system for information like passwords and tries to exfiltrate that information. The malware itself, an EXE, was delivered as a zipped ISO file and probably created with the Nullsoft scriptable install system, a legitimate tool that you often find in order to create Windows installers. Now, one facet of this malware that Jan is explaining in a little bit more detail is how they actually created the from address. In Outlook, at least, the from sender just shows the name does not show an email address, which usually means that the sender is in your address book. And this, of course, gives the email that was otherwise not crafted very well a little bit more credibility by appearing to come from a known sender. The trick here is to use a non-RFC compliant from address. From addresses may include Unicode characters and can use various encodings, like for example, UTF-8. But you're not really allowed to mix and match different encodings. There's one exception where you may have multiple encodings, but then they have to be separated by a space. And that's of course an often used to have the name encoded in Unicode, like UTF-8, then a space, and then the email address in normal ASCII. In this case, uh, the attacker used a comma actually to separate the UTF-8 encoded part from the ASCII encoded part, uh, which uh, then didn't get parsed correctly or, well, couldn't really get parsed correctly because it's not RFC compliant. And the result was that the from email address was not visible because it was sort of considered a second uh, address and was not displayed. So neat little trick and not sure if this was sort of done intentional here or really more happened by accident based on uh, the from address uh, they used here. But nevertheless, the end result is that you only see the name. You don't see the email address in Outlook. So it looks like a known sender. And enterprise resource planning systems from vendors like Oracle and SAP are always crown jewels that are very sought after by all kinds of attacks. Onapsis, a company that specializes in securing these kind of systems, came up with a new report looking at attacks in particular against SAP. You don't hear a lot of discussions about these attacks because uh, this type of software is usually used in larger corporations. So not really a lot of uh, numbers out there, but the ones that are out there and that are accessible count if they are compromised. Onapsis has recorded about 300 successful exploit attempts of unprotected SAP instances since mid last year. Also of note, and, uh, we have uh, talked about this a couple times in the past uh, with uh, these vulnerabilities is that exploits are often released very quickly. Typically, it may take only three days after a patch is released for an exploit to become available. And last week, I mentioned two vulnerabilities that affected older versions of QNAP's QTS firmware, and these versions were no longer supported, so there was an expectation no patch would be released. Well, QNAP came through here and released an update for Q2S 4.3.6, so if you own one of these older devices, please take advantage of uh, this and update, there were at least two critical vulnerabilities that could lead to code execution. 
And users of uh, Gigaset uh, branded uh, Android smartphones uh, recently reported malware infections and turns out that the root cause here was an infected update server that uh, these smartphones connected to in order to download updates. Gigaset smartphones are typically used more in Germany and in other European countries. Haven't really seen them in the US. Not really sure if they're at all available in the US. But if you do own a Gigaset smartphone, then double check and make sure that you don't have one of the infected firmware versions. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.